Hey yo, what's up? Episode number 29 of Voice Memo for Later. Oh boy, we're at home now. We're at home for this episode. Um, we'll, we'll go back to the library. I like the library. Uh, I don't like the echo in there. Or not, not echo, it's like a weird reverb. Um, I should just bring my own padding. Just pad their rooms. They'd be like, what are you doing? Don't worry about it. I'm making this into a studio for one hour and then I'll tear it all down. That'd be such a waste. We got some articles in front of me. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but journalism uh, sucks nowadays. It's like bad. Um, and I found this article off of like the, I don't know, whatever the, whatever this bullshit is that, that Windows does to you now. Every like every device you use now has to like push news and and like things on you to click on. Like you just like, click on this, click on that, and so they have that like the news thing. Um, I like I'm making it sound like it's a recent thing. I'm pretty sure this has been a thing with Windows for like a really long time, but um, it's like getting more and more aggressive. You have to like opt out when you first you know start your devices up these days. Like you have to opt out of everything. They just like push everything to you. But I saw this article. I'm like, here's an opportunity to talk about how journalism fucking sucks now. Because I saw the headline, and I, I know better nowadays. I read the headline, I was like, that sounds insane. But I'm like, also, I don't think this is probably true. <laughs> like, not in the way that they're making it sound. So the article, the, the headline of the article says, Bernie Sanders says U.S. should confiscate 100% of any money Americans make above $999 million dollars. They And then it says in quotes, they can survive just fine. So I see that and I'm like, okay, I know that, I know that Bernie Sanders pushes like pretty aggressive, like tax reform and all this stuff, right? Um, To try to like do more of like a social democracy, uh, you know, more like to push more in that direction. But I'm like, I don't think, like, even Bernie Sanders, I'm like, dude, I don't think I've ever heard him say something as insane as, like, yeah, anyone that makes above, like, X amount of money, we should, quote, confiscate 100%. I'm like, if he did actually say this, that's insane. And that's, like, yeah, no thanks. But I, I'm like, I there's no way he said this, right? So we're going to read this and see what he actually said. And we'll find out. We're going to find out in real time. Well, it's not real time because I'm recording it. But you can listen back to this and we're going to find out. Is Bernie Sanders a crazy guy, or is this journalist uh, Bavik Nair? Bav- Bavik Nair? Dude, I have no idea how to pronounce that. I want to. I'm gonna educate myself right now. Bavik. Bavik pronunciation. Um. Ba Vik Bavik. Okay, Ba. I think it's Bavik. Bavik. I think I'm doing that correctly. I don't know. You know, and you're like Zach. Why are you bothering to get this guy's name right? Because you know what? I have a feeling about to roast this guy, and. I think it's respectful to make sure that when you're roasting somebody, you keep all of it above board. As in, like, go after the shit that is fair game, but don't, like, fucking, you know, like, what, I'm going to butcher his name, right? It's like, that's like, it has nothing to do with anything. So it's like, no, I'm going to, it's almost like it's, it's hard. You go harder on somebody that way, right? Because if you're just letting everything fly and you're saying whatever, it's almost meaningless. It's like, well, yeah, you're just talking a bunch of shit. Who cares? But if you're like, no, nah, I'm going to get all this 100% correct, but fuck you. Like, that that hits so much harder, dude. So, yeah. I, and I don't know. Maybe this guy is a good journalist. I don't know. Maybe he's one of the good ones. But, yeah, I don't know. Bavik. And then, what's this? Nair? N? This might be total bullshit. I don't know. I'm just looking. I'm just Googling this quick. Nair. Pronunciation. Oh, God. And that's like a brand name, too. Motherfucker. <laughs> so who the hell knows if this is even going to give me how to pronounce Nair. Just like. 
All right, you know what? I don't know. This is taking too long. I'm just rolling with Nair. It could be Nair, maybe. I don't. I don't know. It's probably Nair. N a i r. I don't know. So Bavik Nair. That's what I'm just gonna go by. That's who. This, that's who wrote this story about Bernie Sanders. Let's see what Bernie actually said. So it says Senator Bernie Sanders reportedly said the U.S. government should confiscate 100% of any money that Americans make above $999 million. Okay, let's, before we even go further, let's break that down. Senator Bernie Sanders, he starts off right away, he's like, hey, this guy reportedly said the U.S. government should confiscate 100% of any money that Americans make above $990 million. Now, if he wanted to nail him to the cross... He's like, that's crazy, and I'm going to get this guy. Why wouldn't he open it up with the quote right away? And they'd be like, that's crazy, right? I mean, now you could argue, well, he doesn't want to give it away too quick. It's like, okay. The, I think if you're saying somebody reportedly said something, like that's a weird, dodgy fucking word. Reportedly, that's kind of like saying like, oh, well, allegedly. It's like, you know how everyone always says allegedly? when they don't want to like get in trouble legally for making a claim that could be false so they're like well allegedly they did that right it's just a way of dodging out of shit so it's like okay reportedly i see that as like being the same thing you're just dodging out of what you're saying it's like well okay where's the receipts right if he actually said this just quote him oh but reportedly he said this okay interesting let's see how this goes you may disagree with me but fine I wait. Oh, this is okay. So this is a quote uh, from Bernie. Okay. So unless they like actually fucked up the quote or something, because they're really dumb. Like this is actually what he said at, um, at this point in time of the, whatever this interview, this is being taken from or whatever. He said, you may disagree with me, but fine. I think people who can make it or I, sorry, <laughs> I'm going to start over again. That was, I butchered that dude. You may disagree with me, but fine. I think people can make it on 999 million. I think they can survive just fine. Sanders told the host of who's talking to Chris Wallace on HBO max, according to a report by the guardian. So like he said this Wait, hold on. What? So he said this on a show says, or, or did he, I don't even know actually. Cause he told the host of who's talking to Chris Wallace. I'm assuming that means he was talking to Chris Wallace, right? Because <laughs> I don't know. Who's the host of Who's Talking to Chris Wallace? You know what? We'll look that up too. Who? <laughs> I have to type this with one hand. This is so annoying. Who's talking to Chris Wallace? Oh, nice. It came right up. Oh, wouldn't you know? The star of it is Chris Wallace. I'm guessing he must be the host. Yeah, longtime Fox News host Chris Wallace moves to CNN Plus to anchor a weekday series. Yada, 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 yada. Um, little side note, I actually do like Chris Wallace. He's the only guy I, I, I've seen so many clips of Fox news and I've watched bits of it here and there throughout the years. And I, every time I see it, I'm like, these guys are fucking insane. Like these guys are so, so insane. And they have such a strong political agenda. I mean, I, everyone does these days, but like, holy shit, Fox is they're pros. They've been doing this for years, dude they like spin the fuck out of every everything becomes a washing machine it's like they they take a story they throw it in the washing machine it fucking spins around like crazy and they're like this is what we think or not not even that's not what they say though they're like this is what happened it's like that's like a lie that's just straight up a lie but then they're like it's entertainment it's not news it's entertainment okay anywho yeah so, but I do like Chris Wall. He's the only guy I've ever seen on Fox News where I'm like, actually, this guy's pretty reasonable. Um, it's no surprise that he left. I'm surprised he actually was there that long. So, okay. So, but here, okay. Sanders told the host of Who's Talking to Chris Wallace on HBO Max, according to a report by The Guardian. So, they just ripped this from The Guardian or... <laughs> Like, what is happening right now? There was a show, Who's Talking to Chris Wallace, hosted by Chris Wallace. Bernie was on this show, I guess. Or not. Maybe not, right? It just says, told the host of. So, it's just saying he told that guy who happens to host that show. So, it could have been on the show. Could have been somewhere else. I don't know. 
And then they're saying, according to report by The Guardian. So The Guardian reported... Oh, there's a link here. Maybe we can figure this out. They the 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 article or the headline here is and it says in quotes they can survive just fine, and it says Bernie Sanders says income over one billion should be taxed at a hundred percent. Ah, okay, so he's saying it should be taxed at a hundred percent. So first of all, even though that is more or less that's like the same thing. Well, yeah, not even more or less. That is technically that that is the same thing as saying it should be confiscated. Um. It, it the wording there makes it sound really sinister confiscated like okay i don't know um it's a little weird to say it that way but it is it you know fair enough it means the same thing so in this one they actually said that he said it they didn't say allegedly um oh interesting dude <laughs> This article is going to be better. <laughs> Bavik, I'm not even on your article anymore. I'm on this other article because they already wrote about it. You just like stole it, dude. All- allegedly. <laughs> I don't know if he stole <laughs> He just, he quoted them or whatever. I don't know, dude. Okay. So it says, um, here's a, here's a part of this article. He says, it says, and this is in quotes, are you basically saying that once you get to 999 million, that the government should confiscate all the rest? Wallace asked the U S Senator from Vermont, who is an independent, but caucuses with Democrats and has helped them attain their current slim majority and the upper congressional chamber. Holy shit. That's a mess of a sentence. What is wrong with you? These guys suck too. Why they can't write a sentence. It's a terrible sentence. All right, not to... Uh, look, I don't want to get too deep in this, dude, but I have an English degree, all right? I think I know, like, a decent sentence. That is a garbage sentence. Are you basically saying that once you get... Okay, I'm not even going to read the whole thing yet. This is a quote. Wallace asked the U.S. Senator from Vermont, and it's like, okay, that's already a mouthful, right? Who is an independent? Okay, cool, you're adding more to it. But caucuses with Democrats... All right, this is getting a little overkill. And has helped them attain their current slim majority in the upper congressional chamber. Like, you don't need to load one sentence with all that information, dude. Like, you probably have some other bullshit in this article you can cut out, like, and make that sentence, like, break it up a little. Maybe just rewrite that shit, dude. That shit is garbage. Who wrote this, dude? Who the fuck wrote this? Betsy Reed? Fuck you, Betsy Reed. This is a terrible article. <laughs> Like, I read, like, two sentences. I'm like, this is a terrible article. That is a terrible sentence, though, I will say. All right? That's true. Those are facts right there. Facts, bro. Oh, man. Now, I'm, now I've got aloes. I've got aloe means bit in my head now of the, the two guy dude bros that made him flip his political views. God damn it. That's a good bit. I'm not going to do his bit, obviously. You got to see aloe. Go see aloe mean. Check him out, man funny guy um okay so then he had asked that question right and then yeah sanders replied you may disagree with me but fine i think people can make it on 999 million i think they can survive just fine okay so maybe he actually i mean that sounds pretty direct did you'd have to see the video of this like to you'd have to like but yeah that seems pretty direct Hmm. All right, well, let's go back. You know what? We will go back to your your article, Bavik. All right, we're back. Um, on Walmart, Wallace had earlier noted how the late Sam Walton could make Walmart the largest single private employer in the U.S. because of the huge family net worth of about $225 billion. Sanders responded by saying the company, in many cases, pays starvation wages to its $1.2 billion employees, despite how rich the Waltons are, the report said. I mean, here's an interesting... Without getting into it, I'll just say I have... I know... Look, uh, I do know that Walmart has some actually some pretty cool benefits. I will say that. Now, their wages might suck. I'm not really sure. I don't know what they're currently paying people these days, but I will say um, a lot of people 
don't get near the benefits that Walmart employees do as far as like their their time off of work. Um, now they might not always get the greatest pay. They might not get like tons of pay for that time off or whatever. But like, there's a lot of places that'll just they'll just straight up fire your ass if you're if you're like if you keep going out of work and whatever. Walmart doesn't do that shit uh, very readily. So I will say that, dude. See, I don't know. That's the whole like the whole the everyone nowadays is just like they're just trying to push their point and they're like they i don't know they like to say like clickbaity stuff like people just talk like that now people talk in sound bites it's insane and they just try to say buzzwords they're like let me throw in some buzzwords here and uh don't you think that person's evil it's like I don't know, man. There's a whole lot to unpack there. Like, I'm, do you have time for a five-hour conversation? Because that's probably what it'll take. But it's like, well, no, we have time for um, about 15 seconds, maybe. Like, okay, well, you're not interested in actually talking about things um, and, and getting to the like the bottom of it. You're not interested in the truth, you know? You can't handle the truth or whatever. I don't know. I never saw that fucking movie. What is that? What's the... It's Tom Cruise, right? is in that movie and i think uh um god damn it uh jack nicholson you can't handle the truth here it is yeah jack nicholson delivers that line to uh um to uh <laughs> tom cruise jesus his name left my brain immediately right after i just said it but what is the movie? Oh, Few Good Men. Yeah. God, that's such a, like... Look, I'm sure it's probably good. Or it's, like, all right, maybe. But, god damn it, that's such a douchey, like, pretentious title for anything. Few Good Men. It's like, I feel like that's, like, the douchiest way to name any book or movie or show. Is, like, limit it to, like, two or three words. It's just like, you're just like vaguely trying to sound like profound. It's like, okay, calm down, dude. Slow your fucking roll. Like, I don't know. It It's probably good. I'm sure it's probably pretty decent, dude. But that's a shitty title. That's just like, it just screams douchebag. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. So I guess here's the conclusion. Um, He kind of sort of said that maybe. But it's like, it's not, I don't know. I think if you're, you know what, here's the thing. I'm not even mad at going after Bernie Sanders about this because that, that does seem like a pretty dumb take, but it's like, hold on. You, you're going to have to go harder than that, dude. Don't like beat around the bush. I don't know. It's like people are saying crazy shit with their news articles now and like on show, like people just say and write wild shit. It's like, okay, now you're going to shy off. It's like, I don't know, grow some balls. If you're going to do it, fucking do it. You probably have like a team of lawyers behind you at a lot of these places, you know, like the guardian, I'm sure the guardian has like some good lawyers or something. I don't know. But it's like, stand behind what you say. I think that's my big thing is like, if you're going to say some wild shit, stand behind it. Don't like, don't weasel out of it. You know, like I've said some crazy stuff before and like all, all like always own up to it. Now I might disagree with myself shortly after the fact, right? I might've just said something in the moment. I'm like, okay, well that's maybe a little wild, but I will never like back down from having said it. I won't be like, no, I didn't say that. I, what I was saying was, or like, no, it's like, yeah, I said that shit. And I either agree with it still, or I disagree with it now. And I like take it back. But like, I don't take it back as in like, pretend I didn't say it. I take it back as in like, oh, well, yeah, I said that. And I no longer, feel that way or whatever you know i don't know dude that shit's wild to me oh yeah i had this other article pop uh pulled up dad daddy or pa what your name for your father reveals about your class i was just actually interested in this article i it was i'm not gonna pick this guy apart or this gal this guy or this gal or this other person i don't know i'm trying to be pc okay uh, this this per this human i don't know this human wrote an article. I'm going to read it. I might skim it. I don't know if it's boring. We'll see. Cryptologists are baffled by Prince William's tribute to his father, King Charles, which took place at Sunday's coronation concert. 
They are unable to crack it, though they've been working around the clock. Even the few, or even the code breakers in that cyberspace bletchly called Twitter have been foxed. God, this is like dense and boring already, dude. <laughs> okay, so the Prince Williams called his father Pa. That's the that's what they're driving at here. Okay, Pa, we are all so proud of you, is what he said. Okay, and then. Is this a tough thing they're saying? I suppose it's an almost unanswerable question. Um, oh, wait, hold on. But I missed something here. They said they have no truck with modern words like dad, father, or even daddy. Who don't? The royal family? What it does prove is that the royal family is undoubtedly posh. Undoubtedly, sorry. Undoubtedly posh. What does posh actually mean? Like, I think it means like fancy or something, right? I don't know. I've never looked it up the definition. I've kind of read it in passing, but I'm not, I'm not super familiar with elegant or stylishly luxurious. So yeah, so fancy, like I said. So yeah, that is actually, yeah, fancy is a synonym for it. Okay. I was right about that. I figured, but I didn't really know. But yeah, so there, <laughs> wait, is that their hot take? As they're like, what this proves is the royal family is fancy. Yeah, no fucking shit, dude. They're the royal family. <laughs> what a terrible take. Not because it's wrong, but because it's so obvious. I mean, what? You think people don't know that? All right. Pa, wait, what is this thing? This poses an okay. So the, I'll just begin start at the beginning of this paragraph. Right? Is this a tough thing? This poses an uh, almost unanswerable question. As a scholar of social codes, I can say with some authority that "pa" or "papa" is not usually used by people who go to comprehensives. What are you talking? This is like ultra like Brit article or something. What is comprehensives? Is that like some sort of period of schooling or something? Or what? What is that? comprehensives uh british <laughs> comprehensive british meaning god i hate typing with one hand holy shit in britain a comprehensive is a state school in which children of all abilities are taught together yeah yeah, yeah. okay so it's like a public school type situation or a state school whatever okay i figured that the context made it sound like it has to be something kind of like that, but I'm like, I don't know. Dude, this is getting way too British for me. Jesus. Yeah, so that's, yeah, not normally used by people who go to comprehensive. So people that go to state schools, right, they don't say pa or papa, apparently, is what this person's saying. In Tony Blair and David Cameron's classless societies, the public use, or the public use of words like pa might have earned you a jail sentence. What? <laughs> Call me Dave, cunt came from the dad wing of the Tory party. I have direct experience of this. One summer holiday in Italy in the 1990s, Cameron, who was staying nearby, visited us for dinner. He giggled excessively when I called my father daddy. I mean, that's pretty weird on it. I'm going to be honest. Like in today's society, especially you realize daddy has become completely sexualized. If you don't realize that, I'm sorry, but you're not paying attention to anything that's happening around you nothing like that's all over the internet dude everyone knows this by now daddy has become sexualized so not gonna lie like unless you've been saying it for for decades and you've never used it if you've never said dad or or pop or pa or whatever and you've only ever called your dad daddy okay fair enough i guess but like you have to understand by now that like that has a double meaning in today's society, regardless of if you want it to or not, it does, right? So yeah, he giggled excessively when I called my father daddy. Well, that's, I think that's a little weird too, coming from, I've always just called my dad, dad. Is there something wrong with just saying like dad or father? Or, I mean, father sounds weird to me, but like, it's still like, it makes sense, right? It's like, why do people have to go with pa or papa or daddy? And like, those are, I don't know, those all seem weird to me. I understand this is all cultural stuff. So it's like my experience is not someone else's experience, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, I don't know. I think it's weird. Daddy sounds weird to me. That's all I'm going to say. I was educated privately at St. Paul's Girls School, and most of us called our fathers daddy. Actually, daddy is an Americanism. An Americanism? <laughs> 
I mean, sure it is nowadays. It, it daddy's someone you want to bang <laughs> nowadays. It's doesn't get much more American than that. <laughs> All those oil barons in Dallas had daddies, including JR. Then there's Cole Porter's standard My Heart Belongs to Daddy. I don't know who any of these fucks are, dude. I don't know. Who's Cole Porter? That sound like that just that name sounds like a name that you've probably heard before. Like Cole Porter. That's like some famous person, right? But like I don't actually know. Oh, they're an American composer, apparently. Unless they're referring to a different Cole Porter. Um Wait, is that like So he found success on Broadway and whatever. Okay, so he's an American composer and he probably wrote some Broadway shit, apparently. That would explain why I wouldn't fucking know. But is that why is this reference being made in this article in fucking 2023? Assuming this was written Yes, yeah, a story from seven hours ago from the Telegraph. <laughs> like I don't know, that's interesting to me. Is that really that known? Maybe over there? Like this My Heart Belongs to Daddy like lyric is really known or something, maybe? I don't I've never heard of that or Cole Porter in my life. Not even once. Like there's a okay, there's a big difference between not being familiar with something because like you're just not uber familiar. Like you don't pay attention to it or whatever. There's a difference between that and then like somebody who's supposed to be famous and is like, I've never heard of that person one time ever in my 33 years of being alive right it's like how famous can they really be if i've literally never heard them once not ever (laughs) i'm just like i like i'm just shitting on cole porter now for no reason (laughs) i don't know he probably wrote some good music i don't know but this is a weird i guess it's just a weird reference to make in this like semi-mainstream article i mean this is the telegraph aren't they pretty popular like it's like a mainstream publication and they're like making this obscure reference unless again it might be a british thing maybe they're super like they all love cole porter i don't fucking know somebody's gonna listen to this and they're gonna be pissed off they're like how do you know no cool porter <laughs> if people get so mad about stuff like that it's like i don't know i just don't know uh my father didn't call his own father daddy though he was born in 1917 and in those days both the middle and upper class called their fathers sir Ugh, how much would that suck, dude? Calling your dad sir? It's like, yes, sir. No, sir. Okay, sir. Like, ugh. Kill me now. What a terrible existence, dude. I'm so glad I didn't grow up in the the 19, the early 1900s, dude. No, thank you. Papa may seem a trifle little Lord Fauntleroy what (laughs) they're throwing all sorts of weird shit at me what is that supposed to mean this is too british for me to understand i can't comprehend this article because it's way too british little lord fauntleroy it's a novel by francis hodgson burnett okay it was published as a serial in saint nicholas magazine from november 1885 to october 1886 and people are gonna get this reference Even if they are British, they're going to get this reference. Okay, know your audience, dude. I, I, okay, I'm obviously not your target audience. It's the Telegraph. But, dude, no shot is the average person going to pick up and they're like, oh, yeah, little Lord Fauntleroy. Like, no shot are they going to. Oh, my God, dude. Yeah, that's crazy. Um,. But it persists in elevated circles, including the royal family. Oh, man. This article is, like, weird as hell and super boring. Jesus. What is their point? That the... in the I'm not even going to finish because this article is almost over. With the stuff that I've skimmed through and read, like, there's not much to this article. So, it's like... So, this is just... The, the whole point is they're like, I don't know. Some people say dad. Some people say daddy or pa or papa. But you know what? Some of these people are too posh and they, they didn't, they, you can tell that they didn't go to state schools and, and also this literary reference, like, and that guy who wrote some music for Broadway and that's the article. <laughs> what? Oh my God, dude. You gotta, you gotta, this is what you're doing with your life <laughs> is writing this. Jesus Christ. 
All right. Well, this is going to be a short one today. I don't have too much to talk about. I just wanted to get in some of these articles here. Um, you know, some interesting shit. I got a lot to learn, I guess. Little Lord Fauntleroy. Better do some reading. This fucking ancient novel. I, I better do some reading, dude. I bet it's super good. It's a beloved children's novel that made a huge impact on the 19th century public. All right, I'll take your word for it, dude. Jesus. All right, well, I got a, a basketball game I want to watch later, the Lakers game. I'm going to watch that. I got to eat some dinner here. So I'm just doing a short podcast tonight, but you can't say I didn't do a podcast because I did it, so eat it. Whoever's doubting me, you doubters. <laughs> Fucking, I'm going to be back next week, too. All right, later.